Uh, this is Walter Requiem, and welcome back to uh, System Shock 2 Ponderby Station. So last time we left off, we finished the entirety of the recreation deck, and we got our hands on this uh, big beauty we have here. So, like I said last time, the next deck we were going to do was operations, and so, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go there because we have some interesting stuff we can get there. And, uh, content on um, uh, deck 4 on Ponterby anyway. If Recreation is still my first favorite deck in um, Ponterby, then Ops is probably my second favorite deck. This is a, just a really good uh, interpretation of the Ops deck from System Shock 2. Anyway, um, it also has probably one of the funniest plot threads that I, like, I can imagine in a game like this. Well, Catherine, are you satisfied now? Michael has just transferred his workstation to the colony. That's right, he's gone. And it's all your fault. Who can blame him the way you shake your fat ass all over this station? And that makeup you wear, that lurid, disgusting makeup. You think you're so pretty? Guess what, honey? You look like a scarecrow. It's no wonder he was scared off. You're just the silliest bitch I know. And you know what, silly bitch? You'd be well advised to stay the hell away from me in the future. Right. So if you guys recall, um, we actually had an audio log talking about um, two Anderson sisters, um, I believe they even mentioned the Ops deck, who are fighting over a particular man uh, that they both had a crush on. So yes, uh, we are officially going to learn about the Anderson sisters. Uh, uh, in case you were wondering if... Um, Female ex female simps actually existed. Well, they do, at least in the System Shock universe. Anyway, um, yeah. So as you can tell, oh yeah, we can actually get over here. I forgot it's um, over here we can't go to. And I just shot a very loud assault rifle shot. So that's probably going to attract like every enemy in the level. And once again, we have a chemical man chemical room for. Um, research tools that don't really exist in this mod, short of hybrids and such. So, yeah. Just from here on out, the game is probably going to be very easy because we have two sets of power armor. We have, um, 20 hit points max, and now we also have the assault rifle. So it's like GG. I mean, we kind of have everything we need to beat the game right now, but let's just keep pushing it to see where we can get. Looks like we have a monkey somewhere. No monkey business. No hybrid business. Yeah, uh, this thing doesn't fuck around. It two taps most of the weekend, one or two taps most of the weekend enemies in this game. And it makes quick work of the um, quote unquote stronger enemies. Yeah, that's what you get for fucking me up so much on this playthrough, bitch. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. The assault rifle, by nature of being an assault rifle, has the fully automatic mode. Which, um, I don't know. It's kind of redundant in System Shock 2 because, um, typically System Shock 2 is more of a game about uh, conserving what resources you do have. But it does come in quite handy, especially if you learn how the, um, recoil of it actually functions, or if you just have a lot of, uh, Agility, because I don't believe I went over what agility does, but it does uh, decrease the um, knockback of your weapons. And also, uh, this is one of those instances where um, you have to frob a, a code. And honestly, I still forget this thing exists half the time, so always keep that uh, memorized, that there's something there. And here... <laughs> here we have Xerxes XP. And we're about to hear his beautiful rendition of... Love me tender, <clears throat> love me sweet, never let me go. <laughs> you have made my life complete, mm. and I love you so. <laughs> so... Tell him. Today Michael Carver met with me and applied for a transfer to the colony. 
I think you know the reason why. The Anderson sisters have been totally obnoxious these past few weeks. So I granted Michael's request. We're losing one of our best men here on the deck, but the current state of affairs was intolerable. To tell the truth, I'd planned to send the Anderson sisters to the colony, but Jennifer Graham, leader of the colony, refused to have them. Understandably. Mm. Let's hope everything on the deck will ease up soon. Right, so... <laughs> once again, yes, they're basically just female simps. And the other thing is, um... Yeah, so... Uh, Christine just dials up the whole fucking Xerxes singing Elvis Presley, like, to 11. He just... She just straight up has him sing a fucking Elvis song in, um, Ponerby. I still don't know if that's taking, uh one-off joke of System Shock 2 a little too seriously, or if it's honestly beautiful, but it's kind of both. That's something about Christine's jam missions that's <clears throat> definitely a little different from Oops. System Shock 2 proper is that it definitely has a they definitely have lighter hearted moments to them than System Shock 2 does. Which to an extent I actually really like because it's a different take on a game that I really appreciate you know, tonally, and it really helps keep things interesting. The new code for the armory, 75218. As if we'd ever need weapons here on this peaceful station, except for fighting the boredom. <laughs> hmm. Sam, I don't know what's going on here, but the whole security system's acting up. The turrets, the bots, they're firing at us. What can we do now? What? I'm trapped. Right, well, so, <laughs> I just think it's so funny that Ponderby was supposed to be this peaceful thing, like, not unlike the Von Braun, of course, everything just goes ha goes haywire. Like, that's a little bit on the nose, but, I mean, I guess it's cool. Anyway, we have some stuff we can get. We should probably just actually take this good shotgun now, should we, and just, um, keep that on hand. I mean, from here on out, the shotgun kind of becomes irrelevant. I mean, we really have, you know, the best weapon in the game, and then we have the other best weapon in the game in our inventory right now. But, I mean, it's something. I mean, it's something to use if we ever have to conserve ammo. Oh, man. Hell yeah. The silliest uh. bitch I know is you. And Michael didn't move to the colony because of me, because of you. He was so annoyed by the overpowering stench of your perfume. The whole station could tell where you were from just the smell. Not to mention that you ran after him like an ownerless pooch. You were just jealous and couldn't stand that he wasn't interested in you, but in me. Just look in the mirror, Madeline, then you'll know why. Mm. Yeah. And that's basically their extent of their inter interactions. It's just that kind of thing. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Welcome to the single biggest dick move in this fucking mod. Just a hallway full of assault bots. Oh god. Now, fortunately, the assault rifle is OP and we're just killing these guys in like two bursts. So. Shodan, eat your heart out. I mean, from here on out, that's going to be how a lot of fights in this game are resolved. Just with the assault rifle just tearing these things a new asshole. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll switch back to standard for now. Standard is a good default, um, default for the assault rifle, I guess. I mean, it's still the respectful damage, just on <clears throat> virtue of being incredibly overpowered, and it has no real weaknesses, so, yeah. And now we have our other best weapon, the grenade launcher. And this thing is just... It's ridiculous, man. If you actually, if you actually want to one-tap things in this game, you just use the grenade launcher. It's a shame those assault bots are dead, because they would have been a good demonstration. Let's see. There might be some more over here. Let's check it out. Hmm. Yeah, a standard grenade is enough to take out a turret. Mm. 
Whoa. No, you. Yep. One EMP grenade was enough to take him under half health. That's pretty nuts. And we probably could have gone away without using the other standard grenade, but we did anyway, so... Right. Anyway, here we have a armory. We already have the code for it. So let's just go ahead and get in there. So that's 75218. And here, in case you weren't, like, armed to the teeth by now in this game, you just have everything in the game short of the fusion cannon hinted to you on a, on a fucking, like, platter right here. You have a perfect grenade launcher in, um, well, a perfect condition. You have a perfect condition assault rifle with uh, 12 bullets inside of it. You have pretty much every type of grenade up here. Um, shit. Do I? Oh yeah, my power armor's on the floor. You have, um, prisms up here. You have all the bullets. And then over here, we have some more stuff. We have a maintenance tool. We have a French Epstein device. And then we have a ice pick. So yeah, we could totally be using these to uh, hack and everything. And I'm just going to slap this on the grenade launcher. GG. <laughs> this thing is going to be stupid now. I mean, just... I guess we don't need to carry around three brown boost implants. Let's get rid of those. Right. I need to get another level of strength, so we're going to be a hurt unit soon. But yeah. From here on out, Pawn RB just got a lot easier than System Shock 2. I mean, maybe that's a flaw. I don't know. Pawn is not quite as long as System Shock 2, so... Getting loaded at this point in the game isn't a, a fault, in my opinion, as much as it is just kind of... An achievement for playing the game. Ops override. So the next thing I think we're going to get is a level of strength. Just so we can actually carry stuff around. But to get that far, we need cyber modules. And not to get killed by uh, cyborg assassins. Bitch. And there's actually something we should get be getting in here. Uh, it's kind of a challenge to get, but at the same time, you know, it wouldn't be System Shock 2 if there weren't at least somewhat of a challenge. So let us get it. It's on one of these corpses. There we go. Smith Garrett. I still can't believe it. How could this happen? I was caught red-handed, and now I've been sitting here for three days for grand theft. Of cigarettes, for Pete's sake. Damn. I have to get out of here somehow. I don't think these cells are escape-proof. I'm gonna see if I can find my way out. And as long as these guys don't find out about my little stash in the crew garden, my loot is safe. That's where I've tucked away everything I've <laughs> found over the last six months. The code is 24396. When I escape from here, I'm gonna grab my stuff and go on a nice long vacation. Right, so, uh, Garrett, uh, it was actually a reference to, I believe, uh, the player character in the Thief games. And I believe that's even his voice from the games, from what I understand. So, uh, yeah, Christine has, uh, fan missions for Thief as well. So it's it's pretty clear that I mean <laughs> she's a very talented person, right? But also just the fact that it's, it, it's pretty clever to I think have a character named Garrett in a mod like this. And not only that, but Garrett does share his voice actor with um, uh, William Bedford Diego in System Shock 2, as well as Xerxes, believe it or not. So yeah, uh, I think it's uh, Steve Russell, I think, or Kurt Russell. No, Kurt Russell's a freaking. Uh, guy from the thing, RJ McCready, that's Steven Russell. So rip. I mean it would be a I mean it would be badass if um Steve uh, Kurt Russell was freaking William Bedford Diego. I mean, I think the plot of System Shock 2 would have been very different if McCready was involved instead of Diego, but I mean I guess that's a fucking idea for our System Shock fanfiction. Just 
I don't know. If, if, if Child is still alive at the end of the uh, at the end of System Shock 2, he's part of the many. You know, that would be an interesting idea for a game to play on this channel. Would be the the thi the actual game for the thing. Uh, I think it's a PS2 game or an Xbox game. I think it's available on PC as well. I don't know. The thing is absolutely one of my favorite horror movies, so it would be cool to play that during Halloween or something. Maybe even Christmas. That could be like a Christmas time ga game I play. Anyway, so we can finally make our way over here and actually wrap up what we need to be doing here on Ops. So yeah, we're very slowly actually Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, fuck. Oh god, that was close. I'm being trolled. Tails gets trolled with people. Oh. Son of a bitch. I was joking about getting trolled. Yeah. I think we're in range to one shot him with Yeah. And as we upgrade our heavy weapon skill, that's just going to get more and more potent. And that is the power of the grenade launcher. It's a stupid weapon, honestly. And I just realized we'd be, we need to be getting our maintenance skill up, otherwise we won't be able to mod maintain our stuff. The assault rifle needs a maintenance skill of um, four to be repaired, and we don't have that yet, so... Uh, I probably shouldn't have went into it so hastily. Because now, if it gets used too much, we won't have it. So rip. <laughs> anyway, we have another audio log to listen to. Ladies, as you are probably already aware, Michael Carver was transferred to Colony at his own request. So, may I ask you to get back to work and refrain from all private disputes in the future. At the end of my tether, and if you don't pull yourselves together, I'm going to make sure that you both get the sack. I hope I've made myself perfectly clear. <laughs> Man, I feel bad for that dude. Like, nobody likes simps, but imagine having to deal with them. I don't know if they're technically yandere, or if they're simps. I don't, I'm just saying simps because it's funnier for my dumbass. It's probably not very funny, like in actuality, but... I mean, if it were funny, we wouldn't be doing this. This is Shock 2 is a very super serial game. God damn it, Catherine, are you nuts? One of the security bots just attacked me, and I am sure you're behind it. You are really, really beyond help. You know, you won't be satisfied until you've put me away, will you? You know, I can really admire... I don't know. As silly as the audio, as silly as the audio logs are, a good majority of them have pretty decent voice acting, especially for something that's fan-made. I wouldn't say it's on par with something like System Shock Infinite, where everything is just amazingly well acted. But at the same time, uh, you know, I respect what Ponerby has, and I respect that, um, you know, it, it, may, it really does make Ponerby feel like its own place. It has its own, you know, population of idiots, as opposed to, you know, SS2. I love that hanging plan, huh? Sounds like you've neglected to perform the routine security maintenance on the box. And that's where they're all malfunctioning now. You really are up the creek. Let me tell you what I mean for your incompetence. You'd better try to fuck things straight before they're all screwed. <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. That's probably the most coherent, like, <laughs> statement she said that, you know, you better fucking put that shit aside and actually do something about it. Unfortunately, they just continue to do that shit. I think they're actually dead by the like. I think we've actually found their bodies at this point. Anyway, we here we have Mr. Pearson's uh, code. The code for reactor control computer two is one four seven zero five. Yeah, I think his name's actually Pearson, isn't it? Oh no, Pearson. I swear to God, in the um, engineering deck, they call him um, Nick Pearson, which is funny. I don't know if person is actually like a last name or not. I don't think it is. I could be wrong. I don't know. Great, I just like 
ruined one of my favorite songs in this game. Let's wait for him to come by. Get popped. And we got grenades off of them. Yeah, grenade hybrids are actually a pretty decent source of grenades when they actually decide to drop them once in a blue moon. Same thing with the other hybrids carrying med hypos, I guess, and shotgun hybrids carry shotgun shells. Alright, don't sing. Play game. Ow. Hmm. Alright, we have maintenance 4, which is good. And now we can actually keep our stuff maintained, including our assault rifle. So from here on out, it's going to be pretty much like Cake City. I mean, it's not like we have too much to worry about now. We have two sets of the best armor in the game. Uh, we have uh, most of the best weapons in the game that we can just pull out and maintain now. We have a decent stockpile of like supplies I mean we're not in any real danger of running out and we have a stash of some sort to look forward to in deck 5 which is coincidentally our next stop or that's what it would be if I wasn't about to go back to Medsai to do some searching around actually you know what I should probably check the um replicator up here to see if it actually Please has make your selection. oh right uh well Hi there. Please make your selection. Right. We don't actually need um, ice picks this game. There's no final boss that requires uh, hacking, and I don't actually believe there's even um, high security crates, so we can really just use these um, um, ice picks however we damn well please, essentially. Which is good because I would like to buy a good stockpile of um, standard bullets. Well, if your eyes are open, you should have seen me across the fucking hallway. Just a thought. No pressure if you can't. Hi there. Oh yeah, Please here we go. Yeah, it's definitely cheaper to buy. Standard bullets on moss like that. Oh yeah. Should we buy a hi there? Oh what the hell, I'll buy some meta hypos too. And we still have like over a thousand nanites, so we aren't doing too bad for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous, man. And before we head up to command, we have another, like I said, we can take a quick detour to recreation. They have to come go back over here anyway to actually get to command. So let's take a detour to the um uh recharging station and then let's actually go to the garden. Which we have a code from um Garrett to check something out. The code is the secret stash is two four three nine six. So yeah, um last time we went here we got mauled by a fucking dinosaur. I guess we have a very similar thing about to happen, shall we see? Um, I guess there's nothing else to find out but just to go in. Alrighty. Now, this is kind of just... Kind of the, like one of the weirdest parts of the game, honestly. Ah, the, the, the insect baby returns to its natural habitat. You, you, you'd better not let the grass grow under your feet. Okay. Yeah, so... This whole entire area is filled with the brim of Saurians. And Saurians, on the basis of being the replacement for umblers, are basically what you should be saving your anti-personnel ammunition for. Which, coincidentally, this is one of the few areas in the game where it's actually very useful. So yeah, we just basically just murdered half of the fucking Saurian population. I mean, I don't know if they're sentient or not, but if they aren't, I mean, first of all, keeping them, I mean, if they are sentient, keeping them basically is just like 
petting zoo animals on board a freaking um, space station seems kind of fucked up, right? I mean, and if they're not, why the fuck would you take bipedal, like, lizard men onto a fucking, like, ship when they, cl when they quite clearly have claws and stuff that you can use to hurt you, man? I just don't understand it. I mean, this just seems like an accident waiting to happen. I mean, at least in System Shock 2 with the monkeys, they had really no way of predicting that they were going to suddenly develop, like, hugely potent psi abilities and, like, be able to actually pose a threat. But these guys are just pulling random freaking presumably sentient beings on board a ship without expecting them to, like, resist or anything like that. I do not get it. What I do get is that we have cyber modules in there. Woohoo! That's all sorts of little stuff hidden around the level. In fact, we wouldn't even really be able to find what Mr. Garrett is talking about if we didn't have an ex- like a uh, freaking express note of him saying, oh hey, I have something on uh, the recreation deck. I guess we have no other choice but to try to find it. It was pretty easy to find, so let's see. Two, four, three, nine, six. Yeah, this is kind of paranoia inducing. But now we're safe inside of Garrett's stash. And wouldn't you believe it? This guy just is hoarding crazy amounts of stuff. We have 24 cyber modules, 1,216 nanites. We have a perfect assault rifle with some bullets in it. We have a med kit. And we have EMP grenades. So, yeah. Uh, freaking. Uh, Garrett was loaded, man. He left a good amount of stuff for us, and I'm quite happy about that. Basically, just more fuel for our personal little war effort here. Against, you know, um, I guess not so peaceful natives. But natives nonetheless. Let me see. Alrighty. I see you. Oh yeah, you also can't loot their bodies for anything, so that's why I have been looting them. Which is kind of unfortunate, but then again, what would they be carrying? Also, here's a mug, and it's a greenhorn mug. It has a wrap on it for some reason. But this is actually one of the collectible mugs that we can actually recycle for a ton of nanites. So yeah, that's pretty nice. That's the other one I was talking about. I believe there's another one, but I can't tell exactly for sure. If there's one thing that I do know for sure, it's that Ponderby just doesn't, like, skimp out on giving you a bunch of free nanites. It's crazy. Anyway, would you believe it that we're actually not done in here? And I don't know if this is how long this has been in the game, but as far as I can tell, last time I played this game, I found a whole new area over here that was added. And this just blows my mind. I don't know what this is. It's like a little garden slash research lab. Yeah. Really not much, much else to say. There's more chemicals down here, which again, we don't need for anything in particular. But yeah, we just have this whole little elaborate uh, section down here, which I've never seen before. Like I said, I don't know if this is something that's been in the game for a long time, and I've just never noticed it. I don't think so. I mean, let me see here. I probably would have found something like this eventually from my time playing it, but if it's not, I just like that it's here now. Proximity grenades. We have a recharge station. And in here, we have another spider. Fuck you. Uh, we have a body over here, and she has eight cyber modules, so this is a very worthwhile dude's order to take. We get a decent amount of supplies in here, and plus just, I don't know, this section of the mod is just really cool. There's something similar to um, this in one of her later fan missions, but just for now, I don't know. I just really like the, how this room looks. 
This this is one of the things that she didn't need to add, but she just did, and I just think this is super neat. Very, very nicely done. Also, there's a QBR over here, you know, in case you decided to run here through all the Saurians and you're somehow slow enough to get clobbered by them. I don't think I've actually ever been killed by a Saurian in this mod. Probably shouldn't jinx it. But yeah, so that was the Garden of Recreation. Just a very cool little bonus area almost that you can get to and get some nice stuff. And honestly, I was really looking forward to showing that. Hell yeah. So, not much else to do but head on to Command. We're pretty much done on Recreation. We're pretty much done everywhere almost. Do, do, do. All right. Why am I backtracking when I can be going super fast? Especially when there's an assassin. Pretty sure there's an assassin. So if that door closed on me, I would have like. There's an assassin. Hello. Oh god. I forgot I had the agility like booster on me. Oh god, that was horrible recoil. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, that was a thing that happened. Let me see. What else can we get here? Um. Guess we can get another level of heavy just to make that even more potent. Probably go to a level of hack just so we can have. I'm probably gonna go for hack for just so we can hack some turrets. And I'm gonna level of cyber affinity just because that's been kind of lacking on my end and I would like to be able to hack things more efficiently. Anyway, on to the command deck. Finally taking our way up to command. And hopefully sooner rather than later we can figure out what exactly is meant to do on this deck. Well, this is Commander Decker from the UNN. Listen, soldier, we are short of time. A warship, the UNN Nightwalker, is approaching Ponderby Station. It will dock as a matter of routine to load supplies on board. This has to be prevented at any cost. If the UNN Nightwalker docks here, it would be a ticket to Earth for Shodan. Shodan has all communication systems under her control, which is why my communication officer set up a provisional transmitter in the UNN garrison. As soon as this transmitter is online, it will intermittently send an encoded warning to all approaching ships. Unfortunately, the officer couldn't activate the transmitter. Here's my order to you. Go to the UNN garrison and activate the transmitter. Be alert, because Shodan will try everything to frustrate your plans. I would do it myself, but I'm trapped here on the bridge, and the situation doesn't look good. Sir, yes, sir. So, I guess there is a survivor on Ponder B and we're meant to help him. None other than Stephen Commander Decker himself. So I guess next episode we will go ahead and fulfill his ordered final order to us. Anyway guys, until then, this has been What's Requiem and thanks again for checking out my uh, Ponder B Station Let's Play. Um, I guess, um, tune in. Oh yeah, we can't leave now. <laughs> anyway guys, I will see you guys later.